Olusei Olariwaju. Olusei Olariwaju is currently the country chief financial officer, TSL and partner, Zero Q Professional. He was the acting managing director and finance director of Vodacom Business Africa, Nigeria, respectively. He's a three time recipient of the CFO of the Year Award in Nigeria's telecommunications industry, 2016, 2018, and 2019. Recognized as Noble ICANN member in 2020 and recipient of Africa Influencer Award 2020, to mention a few. He has held various roles in multinational organizations, including ExxonMobil, PwC, Zenith Bank PLC, MTN Nigeria, General Electric, Internet Solutions, Conga Online Shopping Mall, Vodacom Business Africa, Nigeria, and Mixta Africa. Sheyi is a seasoned IFRS IPSAS expert, author, and respected analyst on corporate governance and financial corporate reporting matters, with experience spanning over 20 years in corporate governance, leadership, finance strategy, planning and budgeting, finance reporting, compliance, audit and investigation, treasury and tax management, inventory, procurement, risk and asset management. He is also the partner at Risk Free Tutors and Zero Q Professional, accredited ICANN and non executive director in some companies. He is a graduate of Yaba College of Technology and obtained a BSc in Applied Accounting from Oxford Brookes University, MBA from Lagos State University, MSc Finance from University of Leicester, United Kingdom, and PhD Accounting from Charisma University, TCI, UK. He is a fellow of ICANN, CITN, AFAR, IOD, SFCG, CIMA UK, and ACCA UK. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Olusheyi Olariwaju. Temi Tokwe Obayemi. Temi Tokwe Obayemi has over four years robust experience in statutory auditing, corporate financial reporting, cash flow planning, financial forecasting, payroll management, amongst others. She is a vibrant accounting professional, a first-class graduate of accounting, an associate of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and a student member of the Associate Certified Chartered Accountant UK. She is passionate about finance. She loves to help individuals manage their finance properly, and also help businesses make sense of their numbers. Outside work, she develops content that inspires people to take charge of their professional and financial lives. Actually, she can be a bit of everything, from writing, to coaching, to influencing, to mentoring, to reviewing a book, etc. Currently, she leads a book club founded for like-minded ladies to converge, read, and review inspiring books weekly while applying the insight and learnings to their daily lives. She also co-manages a community where they share a number of useful resources to aid personal development and career advancement. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Temi Tokwe Obayemi. Introducing Paul Adebayo. Paul Adebayo is a finance professional who has exhibited the proven ability to organize and develop teams, lead organizations to profitability, curate and transform business models, and boost corporate outcomes while retaining great work quality through the course of his over seven-year career. Paul is extremely passionate about opportunities and ideas in emerging and innovative technologies related to financial products for corporates, unbanked and underbanked in order to help improve their social and economic standing as evidenced by his current role at Civient Finance and as a director at Monified Finance Limited. He was the financial controller of Annual Retail and Supply Limited, one of the fastest growing downstream oil and gas companies in Sub-Sahara Africa and an ex-auditor at PKF Professional Services before embarking on an MBA at Warwick Business School, where he is the current president for Black in Business. He is a chartered accountant and a Bowen University accounting graduate. 
Paul likes traveling and planning the next adventure with family and friends when he's not talking about or playing football. Ladies and gentlemen, Olumide Ibikunle. Olumide Ibikunle is a first class graduate of accounting from Babcock University, Nigeria. He has cut his teeth in the finance and investment management industry. He currently leads the liquidity and investment desk in the treasury and trade solutions business of City Nigeria. After stints as an investment research analyst and financial analyst with Maristem Securities and AO Partners respectively. He is currently a level 2 candidate of the CFA exams and a qualified member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. He has a sound appreciation of the global and domestic economic environment and the capital markets and is committed to assisting young people to create sustainable financial wealth through investing. He has been a regular in the print and electronic media with platforms including BBC, CNBC, Business Day, Guardian, Bloomberg, Naira Metrics and ProShare taking his view on the economy and business. Olumide is also committed to noble causes and actively volunteers for Junior Achievement Nigeria while running the July initiative focused on SDGs 4 and 8. He enjoys Scrabble and watching tennis or football for leisure. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Olumide Ibikunle. Hello, Timmy Tokpe. Hello, Dolako. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, um, we're just going to wait a bit for the other panelists. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dolapo. Hi, Timmy Tope. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to Good be afternoon. here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dolapo. Pleased to meet you. Same here. Welcome, Timmy. So good to have you here. Thank you for. I mean, Thank for accepting you. our invitation. Um, media will be <laughs> waiting for you for the remaining panelists. We can only see Timmy talk here. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think we'll just start with Timmy, why, why, we, why we wait for the other panelists to join, right? And, I mean, I looked at your profile and we had a discussion on ICANN, right? And, I mean, you won an award um, some years ago when you were in your writing ATS TV, right? And okay, is Timmy still there? Okay, can you hear me, Timmy? Yeah, yeah, I can hear yes. you. Yes, okay. yeah. Sorry about the the network. We're going to fix everything now. So um, yeah, I was asking yeah. that. I mean, you 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 won an award some years ago when you wrote your icon, right? And sometimes people yeah. think that icon is like a like a small god that you cannot it's that you good. cannot pass demigod. or something. Yeah, yeah, demi god, right? So I mean, my my question to you will be. What do you think we can people can really do to make sure that they excel in their in their papers or in their exam? Like especially that like you've won an award and the experience you have with that. Okay, thank you very much for that question. So first, I'd like to start with winning a prize is not uh, something that is unachievable. You can achieve anything you put on your mind to. So I believe the first thing is is for you to to set a goal for yourself. So my own prize did not just happen. Although I believe that some people, they are just fortunate, it just happens. They didn't plan for prize, they just won prize. But during my own time, I mean, people that we wrote I can together, they knew that it was something I, I wanted, like I desired it. I, I had to relate with people that had won prizes and past exams. I met them, we spoke and all of that. So the first thing is decision. Do you want it? It's, it is not, um, it is not a do or die affair. It's not compulsory win our award. But if you are someone like me that likes to be exceptional, that likes to be outstanding, then set a goal for yourself. Then secondly, you have to do more. You don't want to achieve what other people are achieving. That means you have to do extra, like you have to go extra mile. So then I was in Yavatek when I was writing my high can. So the only thing I do is from student five because I received lecture in student five. From student five to Yavatech to Yavatech Library. Yavatech Library was practically my home. I was always there. I read after classes because uh, I was studying statistics, so we, we didn't really have so much to do, just maybe a few classes during the day. After classes, I head straight to the library and then I'm there. I close very late, except for this day I have to be in church. If I'm not going to church, 
then you see me in the library, I leave very late, then I'm back to pie and like that. That's like my lifestyle. So you have to go extra mile, you have to you have to do more. So if you are reading three hours, maybe ordinarily you read for three hours, but if you want to win prize, you want to you want to achieve 90 something, then you have to do more. You have to do more. You have to study in depth. So it's not just um reading to pass exam. So I noticed that a lot of times many of us we audit questions, we do skimming, so we do permutation and com combination, we take past questions and we are like, oh this diet, this topic came out, this diet, this topic came out, this diet, that means this diet though, it is this one that will come out and it's this one that you will read. Now if you want to win price, you have to read everything and you have to study in depth like a different day. and it's just one it's not just one level of reading, right? You have to do maybe two levels of reading. Particularly in my audits, in my audits, I think I read the pack like three times. Like that's the um, study test that I think it was. I read like three times. So, I mean, for somebody that has read a book three times back to back, you can you can imagine what we, what that kind of person will score in an exam if the person does not have negative home support. So that's it. You have to do you have to do more. You have to study more. You have to familiarize with your familiarize yourself with the past questions because it's not enough for you to read. Sometimes you have read something. But when you get to the exam, you see you see questions and you are you you are out of balance. So past questions give you the look and feel of how your questions will be set. So if the more you read, the more you solve past questions. So as you are reading a topic, search past questions, search previous questions on that topic because it's not just going to be what is what is questions could come in any form. It could be case study, it could be short answer, it could be anything. So the more you solve past question the more you get a brand view of how a particular topic can be tested and again pray i mean i cannot even overemphasize this so in church we used to do something we used to do days of grace and then we, they give us expectation form and all of that the only thing i had on my expectation from that year that i won prize was i wanted to pass and win prize and i want to finish in school i want to i don't want to have carryover because in statistics then statistics department a lot of carryovers and me i'm not so good in statistics they threw me into statistics i didn't i didn't choose statistics so then i was like god this is the only two things i want i want to be prize in my high time and i want to pass all my papers in my in my school i don't want to have any carryover and he did it so it's not enough to read whatever you believe in either you're a christian or you're a muslim make sure you tie your your goal make sure you tie it to god because the bible says we should commit our plans unto the lord and he's going to establish it so as much as you have done your best make sure you commit it to god and trust me it's, it's definitely going to carry your, your effort with good success so yes i believe that's what you need that's the commitment you need to be a price winner thank you very much i mean that was Bye. very loaded I got a few things with me, which was also close to what um, Mrs. Olainka said, that no zero days. If you want to be exceptional in something, you have to put in exceptional efforts. Mediocre yeah. efforts cannot give you exceptional results. So you have to do well to be able to get good results. But I also know from discussions that I've had with Shewo, I also know that at one point in time, there was, uh, we had to we sit a uh, paper, I think one mm -hmm. or two. I would like mm -hmm. to know how, um, what that failure did to you mentally, uh, financially, everything, and what you learned from that failure. Mm. Right, thank you very much for that question, Dolapo. So I, I think for me, failure is a catalyst. If I had not failed in ATS2, I don't think I would have won price in ATS3. Let me just start with that. I think the failure in ATS2 was what gave me the ginger, the vibe, the the energy that I know. ATS3, mm -mm, I must I must pass and I must win price. It was that failure in ATS2 that 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 spurred me. So failure to me is a catalyst. It's a, it's um it's normal to fail. Let me just put it that way. Although some people are very fortunate, they they just they just do pam pam pam, they are done. But for me in ATS2, I feel QA, that day, I think about two people, only two people escaped QA. Every one of us, we failed. So when I got to it, I wrote it again and I passed. When I got to it, it's the fear of failure, like I don't want to fail again, no. plus the money. At that time, there was not so much financial backup and all of that. So at that time, I didn't really have so much. So I was like, ah, I can't do this thing again, no. They told me to fail. I'm going to collect my money back from ICANN because I heard that um, when you win price, 
ICANN gives you money. And then student file, like the, the um, what they give you as compensation is your next diet will be free. That is, you will not pay lecture, lecture fee. So when I heard that, I was like, okay. Okay, now I'm paying, I'm paying double money because I, I paid for QA twice. So I told myself that I'm going to collect my money back from my account. And the only way I'm calling my money back from my account is to win prize. And that was what helped me. So when I got to the TSTD, I, I wrote it down that I want to win prize. That when I win prize, in my skills level, when I get to my skills level, I will not pay student pie. And then I can't give me money to compensate me for the QA. <laughs> QA that I paid for twice. And that was... That was it for me. So failure is not when you fail, it's okay to cry. I'm not saying you should stop marketing. Cry, pick yourself up, dust yourself up, and start all over again. Like we we move. That's the word. We move. Don't mm -hmm. just sit there and start feeling pity or start wallowing in sorrow and all of that. I understand that it can be very difficult for a lot of people that have written this paper more than maybe maybe more than twice. You've probably written it like three times. It's okay. Pick yourself up, start all over again, and let that 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 fear of failure let it drive you, let it burn some level of energy in you for you to for you to do much more in the next attempt. So yes, failure for me was my own catalyst. If I had not failed, I don't think I would be that move to win prize. I don't think so. I don't think so. So failure for me was 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 a good one. Thank you very much, Tim Takwe. So with me now, I can see that we now have Paul Adebayo with us and Olumide. So thank you guys for making our time to join us. I have a question. My question is for Paul Adebayo. So Paul, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, Dr. Paul. Okay. Hi, Paul. So from knowing you, I mean, we worked together at one point, right? I know that we went through a lot. When I say we, it's we because we all know. We went through a lot with PM. We wrote it a couple of number of times before finally passing it and um, getting certified at our final trial. So I would like to know what your experience was like. What kept you going to say, Okay, this have uh, this paper has been written to me once, twice, twice, four times, and I still want to do it. I don't want to give up. What kept you going? And also, what can you identify as that last final point that you got it five? What can you identify that you did differently that you would say got you your eighty five marks? Okay, um, thanks a lot for um. For me, I, I've been writing PM since um, I think 20, 2014 or 2013. And I actually wrote PM before it was called PM. It was called Management Accounting. So I've been filling from Management Accounting into the new syllabus. And um, wow. I started with uh, Management Accounting. I failed that twice. And then I moved on to they change the syllabus and thinking that if they change the syllabus, I'll be more lucky. Um, whereas I can had uh, more um, more packages for me, so I went on to write PM. Um, for PM, I failed the first one. I failed the second one. At that point, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I think this is not my calling. And um, bearing in mind that I've been writing um, ICAN from eight years, um, so from for me, I started eight years one. I wrote four papers. I passed two. I failed two. I went back, I wrote the two, I filled one again, passed one, and then I'm like, you know what? This eye counting, I don't think is my calling. But I got somebody to speak to me and um, gave me the morale and the confidence to move ahead and then and continue to push. And then that triggered me to do it, it is two. For it is two, I passed that, I wrote four, I passed four. It is three, I wrote four, passed four. I went to skills, that's, um, intermediate there is a new there was a stage from transitioning from ATS to ICANN and um I passed that one and then I got to PM. So for me what made me keep um pushing was that I had a decision and decision for me determines destiny and the decision was to be a chartered accountant and since I had that at the back of my mind I felt that was enough motivation for me personally to keep moving and to keep pushing. Um, at a point, I for, configured that maybe the best thing for me to do is to switch from ICANN to ACCA. 
So I went on with some of my friends to consider changing to ACCA. And um, when I went there, I got the lecture parts. I looked at it. I looked at their past questions. I'm like, even if this thing is in another language, which is ACCA, I will still feel this thing. So there was no point running away, paying more money for ACCA. Let me just continue to struggle here, and one day I'll be lucky. I was relying on luck, but I think luck is not going to work for you. Um, the best thing to do is to make sure you have a plan, you have a focus on what you want to do, you have a decision within yourself that you have to do this. And if you have that, it's, it changes the ball game entirely. For me, I was doing I can then, and I was doing things wrongly. I was doing things because I think I should do them. And that was not, that was not enough motivation to pass, or that was not enough reason to pass I can. So for me, what I would advise for people that are failing and um, need an energy to keep pushing is what, are, what decision do you have as a person? What do you have within yourself to say, yes, I want to do this thing? When you understand that motive behind what you're doing, then that gives you enough motivation. So anytime you decide that, I'm tired of this thing, I want to move on. When you look at your goal in front of you, it pushes you on. So failure, regardless of um, your decision is not failure for me is a choice you decide that you failed if only you quit so if you don't quit and you keep pushing and you keep moving i think at the end of the day you would be able to scale through hi paul um thank you so much for that i mean i really like how you highlighted holding on to your decision and the reason why you are doing something right and I think that that is what really, really holds you down at the end of the day. And to say that, okay, you won't get tired, you won't stop. But I mean, aside even having that desire to, to continue and having that will, right? I also feel like, um, I mean, over to you, Paul, another question, which is, are there things that you feel that you could have done right instead of writing it so many times? Are there things you feel that, okay, I feel like you could have written it once. Why did you eventually write it five? What could you have done? So over to you, Paul. So for me, the first thing was um, I I made a decision within myself that I want to I want to get chartered, I want to get qualified. But to be honest, it's not that straightforward to 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 say you want to do this and then you just go ahead to do it. So what I would have done differently, or what what gave me that energy was initially. I was just writing, I was reading PM because I was told to read PM. I did not understand why what I was doing. So if the question should change slightly, I'm off balance. So I never understood mm. the reason behind. For example, they say standard costing. I crammed everything. But if they come and say they twist <laughs> just one word there, I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> because it is not coming in the direction I did. And this even affected me. The diet I passed, when I saw the questions, I could not write for like 15, 20 minutes because I had that panic. Like, would, would this question mm. throw me out? So uh, for that first 20 minutes, I needed to be calm. I needed to understand that I'm not going to write this thing again. So that purpose within me was enough motivation for me to push. So understand what you are doing why you are doing it is key so, so you don't just go and say oh this didn't come out last year this didn't come out two years ago then this should come out this year no i was doing that initially for the first five trials and mm. if it goes off my permutation i'm i'm messed up mm. so don't permit it make sure you cover everything <laughs> that has to be permutation Makes will sense. mess you up and then yeah, nice understand <laughs> understand why you are doing it. Understand the reason behind a topic. Understand what the topic is trying to address. Understand what they are trying to test, such that in case they flip it around, you are still able to navigate your way through. So that was key for me. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. That was really helpful. I mean, Paul, I said, don't be a scientist. I know some people try to do this one comes out, this diet. You're not, you're not a professor. Just read your syllabus right and plan ahead and that's that's, that's that's the kind of things we want to help people to understand and even help them to do so um good to see you mr shay and olumi day uh, mr shay can you hear me just want to confirm yes i can hear you oh okay oh, all right thank you thank you very much that's so good to have you here and um thank you for taking out your time to be here. i mean we'll just ask you a question i mean 
we found out that sometimes some people start writing like and they stop. It's like as if they don't know why they are writing it, right? So we want you from your experience. I mean, you've done a lot of things even after your ICANN. I mean, what would you say is the benefits of finishing your ICANN? Because some people, I think their major problem is, is it even worth it? Like after all the stress. So for you, it, what has it done in your career? What What is the progression? I know you've worked in different organizations, big fours, top organizations in the world. I mean, so how has this positioned you and even prepared your mind, apart from just even the certification for what you've become and what you will still become? Um, thank you very much, Olumide, for that question. Um, good afternoon, my co-panelists. Um, I think for me, before you embark on any adventure, you must um, sit down, ask yourself questions, why am I going into this? Uh, how would this act to me? Because at the end of the day, it's all about how would this affect me? How would this affect my plan for my life? So, to, as a student, while I was writing the exam, for me, I, I saw it then as a goal that is going to change my life. And I proposed in my mind to say, I'm not going to end I can by failure. So, that's what, what was keeping me to say that this project I've started, I'm going to finish it, you know. I remember I wrote I can examination when it was the era of... Um, fail one, fail all. So my first diet was in 1997, you know, foundation class. And I passed all the quantitative and mathematical courses, financial accounting, uh, quantitative analysis, cost accounting, uh, economies, and I had double star in law. I read, I was a very smart guy, you know, I'm, the result came out to be that they gave me double star in law. I felt so devastated, you know. I had I had um, one of the panelists talking about I don't have the money then. It was same for me. To pull that resources then was, you know, a tall order. So where do I see money again to write this exam? But like I said, for me, finishing ICANN was a goal. I wasn't ready to end it by failure. So that kept, you know, uh, pushing me. You know, and I go to mommy, mommy, find something now. This is a good <laughs> change in my life. You know, I've seen people that have been qualified and I see what they have become. So that was, you know, what kept me during the time I was writing the exam. It was tough. In fact, our days were, were very tough. We only had a center in Lagos then, and that was trade fair. I stay in Shomolu. Imagine the journey from Shomolu to trade fair inside rain and all those kind of things. It wasn't too palatable for anybody to write an exam under those conditions. But because it was a goal, I kept on, you know, and I supported myself with very brilliant friends. You know, guys, I know where they were going at that point. So we're all reading together. You know, if I feel tired, I see my colleague, my friend reading, I'll be motivated to go back to read and just encourage myself. So I think passing I can... People must see it as a project that must be finished. I know there are mm -hmm. factors, you know, especially in Nigeria that could make you fail, traffic, no light, no all those kind of things. But if you see it as a project that must be completed, you will always encourage yourself and go back to it. You also asked me that, how has this affected me? As you can see, it has affected me in so many ways. I remember because I was qualified, or I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Proud uh, at, at, at our day, PwC don't usually employ people that have HND. I think my mm -hmm. set was about the top set they took in with HND. And we already even qualified from school because we wrote the exam while we're in Yaba Tech doing OND. So the last year I finished my HND exam, that was when I got an appointment with PricewaterhouseCoopers. You can't believe it. And that just wow. changed my life, you know. I already have I can, you know, I was able to apprehend on time at work. I was able to mingle and discuss with quality people. And from PwC, I was just moving from one place to the other because of that qualification. And it wouldn't have been if I had not seen it as a project that must be completed, you know. So that's what I would say there. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. I mean, we're we extremely grateful for that. And I think 
I've taken out a lot of things and one thing I took out is having brilliant friends, having people that are ready to move on this journey with you. And I, I mean, I found out that sometimes it's difficult to go on your own. I mean, back in 2015, Olumide year used to actually teach me some papers, right? <laughs> he would come to my house when we're in Ota and teach me because I mean, he was like all those, he was the brilliant person in school. He was even, he was a year younger than myself, but I mean, for me, it was like, I need to learn this thing. I will call him over. He will teach me, will teach me, even if I didn't still understand. Even that diet, I still failed. But I mean, we shall gather ourselves together and keep pushing, right? So would, I mean, Olumide will just ask you a question, right? And the question is, I mean, looking at looking at your career, your CV, ah, you know, you're like always the best everywhere you go and everything. And sometimes people will think that hmm, maybe this person is just born to be brilliant. His own is just born, is gifted. Right, but I know that beyond that, you do something. There's an effort that you do. Right. I see how hardworking you you are, and I'm like, ah, this Olumi day is everywhere like this. Right. And I mean, I just want you to talk about that, what it really takes to be at the top of everything that you do, even in your exam, even in your profession, even in your school, even at work. Like, what does it really take? The mindset and the things that it takes to get to that level. So, thanks so much thanks, uh, for inviting me to this event and thanks to everyone who has spoken. I've learned so much even from uh, everyone who has spoken so far. I think I think it's clear to everyone really I mean, at, at this point that with above average intelligence, with above average intelligence, you know, we, we, we as humans, we have this subjective we measure in people's intelligence. Right? We say IQ test, right, all of those things. But personally, I believe that Someone with above average IQ, and pass I can, and pass whatever exam you set your mind to, and do features greater than anything that you set your mind to. Right? Uh, the thing about examination, right? The thing about examination is that they are, they are tests of how well you're able to absorb information and how well you're able to also reproduce that information, right? And that's exactly what you were go beyond the exams and you go into um, into the actual work environment and it is a case of not just reproducing information but synthesizing information you have and putting it to good use for work right um i hear people tell these stories of how you know they pass exams and i think the, the principles are the same globally there are things like all first principles right and they apply to just about anything whether exams or work or anything else Right. Uh, having a routine that works, I think one, one very, that's one very important, important point that Flying uh, Carrier Synergy mentioned that, uh, having a routine that works. And I saw a question in the comment box, someone asked a question about oh, how do you, what do you advise, what time do you study, what time is best for assimilation and all that. Well, the reality is that everyone, everyone's a constant system. You've been out all day, you work in 9 to 5 or 8 to 5 or on paper, nine to five. Well, you know, in reality, it's usually about eight to you know, say ten p.m. Sometimes that this one is eight to ten p.m. So based on that reality that you have, you have to walk around, right? Um, it, um Mr. Shea, you were saying something about uh, I can be in a project. Literally, just about every other exam that you're writing at any point in your life, it's a project. Currently, I'm writing a CSE exam right now, and I know that while I'm writing CSE exam. There are certain things that you have to put aside. I see him is is going for O and B now, and you can do that now because I mean he's gone through all the ropes, he's gone through all all the hoops, right? And <laughs> you actually have the time to do whatever he wants to do now. But while you are preparing for this exam, while you are learning the ropes, while you are trying to get it, while you are trying to get it, so it's important to understand that these are projects that you have to embark upon before you get to the final level, before you get to the, to, to where uh, things become a lot easier. Right, and I think it is important for everyone who is on the call today. Young people, I know that most people are writing like that today, and young people try to study university or you start out your career and all that. And people, people are it's a it's a it's a tough balancing act. You want to write exams, you want to get ahead in life. At the same time, you want to enjoy yourself, right? Most young people, Gen Z, millennials, we want to enjoy ourselves while we're writing exams and all that. But you also to understand that. It's important to take that thing as a project and keep it quiet, right? 
uh, I had the privilege of writing these exams when I was in when I was in school. I qualified for it. I left school um, at twenty, and I think it's an advantage that I had. And so I'm speaking specifically to anyone who is on the call today, who's in the university, who's in the and thinks, oh, you know what? When I'm done in school, I'll think I can. You think I start now? It's an advantage if you have it. I said that I'm thinking of that. That's a very wonderful story. If you have that advantage of doing this while you're still in school, take it and use it, right? Because one thing is sure, you are in a university environment, especially in a learning environment, where you are able to, everything you are doing is learning, whether you are taking exams, ICANN exams, or you are taking um, school exams or whatever, right? It's an opportunity that you can, you can mix everything together. When you say no more task, yes, no more task a lot on other things, but when it comes to education, when it comes to schooling, exams and all that, you can mix all of those things. Take it as one of your courses, or four of your courses, take it and, uh, and use it. I think also very important is the policy made about having cheerleaders, having accountability partners. Whether you're writing exams or whether in life, it's important to surround yourself with the right kind of people. People who believe, uh, who are headed in the same direction. I'll put it that way. Who are headed in the same direction. She was saying something earlier about uh, I mean, in school. So I, I went to Babcock University, and at the time when I was in Babcock, we had this program with ICANN such that uh, you could finish your ICANN one year after your uni, right? Four years, you do your BS, and the final year, you devote to primary to ICANN. I didn't take that route. I, I started from my ATS, my ATS 1, I did my 1, 2, 3, did my skills, did my professional. So I went through the entire program, right? When I got to my final level, which was the professional level, I was in my 400 level. And the, the other guys who were taking the professional level at the same time were in 500. That was Shion said. We're in 500 level. And because I was ahead, right, of my peers, right, it was important to mix. It was important to get, among, get, get close to the guys who were in 500 level or who were already writing the professional level I wanted to write. I think it cannot be a one percent for any exam that you want to write. Find people who are going in the same direction, right, and work with them, right. I remember then, um, she opened these people, Gozi. Uh, God board, you know, Labor, all of these guys, we work together, we're studying together. Interestingly, uh, the final level, that's uh, the personal level, was the first I can was the first I ever filled. All the other uh, four levels before that, I passed all through and through. And in the final level, I got there, I had, I passed all the other courses. And then in corporate reporting, I had 49. I was university. I was university. But because I had a community of people who, um, who were working with me, the community of people, who were my cheerleaders, who I was accountable to. Of course, I could not give up. I got in that far. I, mean, I was at the final level, right? I had written, I literally passed all of those other papers. Unlike um, Shay's days, when if you fail one of the papers, you fail all. In our own days, I mean, you, if you fail one, you just have to retake that one. So they pushed me, they said, oh, you, you just have to put in a little more effort, and then you will pass the final paper. And so to it, by the next day, I took the exam and I passed it, right? And this applies even to whatever else that you do in your life, right? Failure is, uh, is not fatal. It's not fatal on there to give up yourself, right? There are times at work when it seems like, oh, you're never going to get it. There are times at work when it seems like, oh, you're not making as much money as you're supposed to be making. Of course, everyone in, in most environment, you understand how we all have, uh, we all have targets, we have all of these things. And there are times when it seems like, who I can't make it, make this. We're having the right group of people around you. We have conversations with these people, share some of your, uh, share some of the challenges that you have, share some of the experiences that you have. And you can leverage the experience that you have. You can leverage the learning that you've had in your own, own other rules, in your own other, um, in, in other situations. Leverage the experiences and use them to get ahead. And really, that's what has helped me so far. So I think the people factor is important. Uh, understanding that what you have, Whatever time in the project, I'm focusing squarely on it is also important. Uh, and um, also understanding, again, I, there, there was a point I was going to make. Uh, I think several of the people who have spoken here are talking about past questions. I also thought it was important to have on that. Think about past questions as a difference between school and work, right? For anyone who is writing now. Think about past questions, about the difference between school and work. When you're in school, all of the theories are thrown in your face, right? You learn all of the principles, you know, if you're, but when 
you get into the work environment is when you look and then it's a huge difference, right? And past questions kind of help you bridge that gap, right? Mm -hmm. When you take past questions, you look at, you see all the different complexities that were applied to a particular context, right? You see all the different ways that this could be tested, right? If I'm, if I, if I'm taking an IAS, for instance, right? I've learned all the theories about it. But it is only when I looked at questions that we able to see. Also, it could be actually, it could actually be tested in this way. It could be tested not as a standalone question, but as a question that is infused in other questions. And that's how it is at work. No one will ask you directly at work about IAS 1 or IAS 10 or whatever, right? No one will ask you those things at work. What the, the kind of challenges that you will face at work, complexity of challenges you will face at work, are challenges that would involve what and IAS is at work. And that's what past questions speak to help you achieve. Thinking about the question in so many, thinking about the application of the uh, of the principles in so many different ways, and that way you're able to get ahead. So, think about the difference between principles or school and application or the actual work environment. So that will help you. Uh, that will give you enough context to begin to apply past questions, even whatever exams that you have. Uh, um, right now, I'm right to say beyond the exams, beyond the, the core material in the test. There's so many past questions from several years. There's more exams that you can take. All of those things give you insight into how how you can approach a principle, how you can approach a concept so that in taught in any of the learning maps. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Olumide. I mean, you've you've just given us like ten years inside inside this few minutes that you spoke, and, and it's very interesting, right? And things I picked out with dealing with past questions. I really like how you mentioned that, right? Making sure you test your understanding, making sure you have people that will cheer you on, making sure that you have people that are just there, right? And thank you so much for that, Olumide. And um, Dolako, Dolako wants to ask a very interesting question to all the panelists. So over to you, Dolako. Everyone, please can you please can you confirm if you can hear me before I go on? Hello, Dolako. Can anybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can. I can hear you. Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead can since we can hear Dolako at the moment. Maybe it's the network. So, um, the question now is, I mean, a lot of people have been asking when when people even registered, people are asking, how do you combine um reading for your exam with a tedious job, right? And I know some people work in different organizations. Some people work in the big four. Some people work in multinationals, and they don't have time for themselves. I know how it can be. I mean, me and Paul even worked together some years ago, so I know how it is when you have so much to do and so little time, right? So, but I mean, looking at everybody's career, everybody has achieved big things despite the fact that they have exam. So everybody has exam. Everybody still has a tedious job, right? So I wanted to ask you guys how you guys did it. The wisdom behind it and how you've been able to really really come out strong i mean because we want to also excel our work do well in our exam right so if temi Tokwai can hear me temi just you will start with you then we'll take yeah, it up to the other panelists yeah hello can you hear me can you all hear me can temi hear me yes i can i'm speaking yes we can hear you yes you can all right oh, okay so, um, so we'll just, i'll start with paul since timmy cannot hear me Paul, go over to you over to you paul timmy can no, timmy is talking i think timmy is talking timmy please go on okay so uh hello everyone so i'll say that um combining classes and um either work or school can be difficult i know because i was once there but I think um, having a workable reading timetable would um, would do the job. So what do I mean by a workable reading timetable? So I've seen a lot of students send me um, timetable in past, and I see something like um, on Monday I will read this, on Tuesday I will read this, and all of that. Those ones are just generic timetable. So uh, I feel having a structured timetable that says that okay, this time of the day. I mean, get your alarm, your whatever you are using. This time of the day is when I will read. So if you if you work, um, let's say nine to five or nine to six or nine to eight, I'm sure that there is a one hour break in between that they give you for your lunch. You can do 45 minutes of the one hour for your for your reading. You can set aside 45 minutes out of the one hour for your reading, and then when you get back to the house, eat, have a good sleep, then 
later in the middle of the night you read and the only way to to keep to that timetable to keep to that structure is if you have a a, a um should i call it alarm if you have an alarm or you have a group of study bodies maybe you guys read together that way you are accountable that way you have somebody to wake you up because if you are doing it alone you might you might get tired it might be boring and all of that but if you have study bodies that once it's 2 a.m everybody they ring you they ring your bell and then everybody's up we are reading i think that works then again is to be consistent so some people read today tomorrow they don't read the next tomorrow if you are not consistent like that you even lose track of what you have read because you are not consistent so i believe following a plan if you have a plan follow it ensure you follow it i know that sometimes life happens but don't make it a, a habit not to follow your timetable have a structured plan follow your plan have a study body for accountability purpose and i believe with that you are able to combine your work and your studies and none is affected thank you very much timmy paul please can you go on yeah, thanks, Demi. I mean, to, to top up with what Demi has said, um, I think planning is key because you have an idea of your calendar, you know yourself, you know when you have to work. Um, some organizations will tell you you have to work 8 to 5, but in reality, I don't think you will work 8 to 5 because you have to transit from your home to your work. And if you are staying on the mainland and working on the island, you have to consider traffic. Going back to the house after you finish from work is also to be included. And then you get home, you're tired. The reality is everybody has his own limit. Everybody knows what can work for them. And for me, how I was able to do mine, I was quite lucky because from my house to the office was not that far. And um, I was able to plan my calendar properly. Once you plan your calendar properly, it helps you to be able to adjust for uncertainties because definitely you have uncertainties that would happen and um, your planning might might be affected. Um, the bottom line of how to solve that is you know your limits, you know your calendar, you know yourself, you should be able to adjust that around that. The second thing I would say is you should have a clear communication with your employer. So some employers are quite flexible they would, if you tell them, oh, I'm writing an exam at this particular period, they might be able to give you, oh, okay, close at so-so-so time. Okay, do this, do this. And then some employers might not be that friendly for you to have. I mean, it might be, it might be peak period at your organization and you have, to, you have to be on the job and it can be difficult sometimes. So another thing to do at that point is, when you understand your employer and you know what the what they would require from you that helps you adjust that into your calendar because everything basically is about your planning and then another thing i would also like to mention is um during the period of writing an exam nine to five and writing the exam as well i think you should also eat well because you you, you want to stay healthy at that particular period you don't want to you don't want to fall sick during that period because that destabilizes your calendar and your planning and once that happens, I mean, it, it throws you out of um, out of balance. So if you have that also to, to consider, it helps you in adjusting into your calendar and your plan. Um, another thing I would say is be your own self. You have to you have to understand your own capability. Some people would read at night. Some people would read at mornings. Some people would say because my friend is reading at five p.m. or 10 a.m., sorry, 10 p.m. at night, that's the best time for me to read. You should know yourself. And if you understand that I'm an early person, you know that, okay, that means you have to wake up earlier than schedule for you to be able to read before you go to work. And then if you know you're a late night person, you understand that when you come back at night, you have to read then. So each individual would have their own um, preference on how they want to read. And then once you have all those together, with a solid calendar and a solid plan, I believe you should be able to navigate how to balance um, your nine to five with writing an exam. Um, thank you so much, Paul. That was really helpful. I mean, I really liked how you said we should eat well and communicate with our employer, right? And making sure that, I mean, we are properly prepared, right? And I mean, even Timmy also mentioned things like 
having a plan and following it. And I think that sometimes people are scared to even discuss it with their employer. But I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no need to be scared about it. Discuss it with them, right, and let them know. And um, yeah, I'm sure they will give you that access. So um, over to Olumide on the same question of okay. how to balance work and um, a, a, um, writing exam in, in two minutes, please. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, I think, again, there's probably nothing I want to see here that, that everyone else hasn't already said, right? Um, I would say, again, for the benefit of those who are still in school, right? I'm saying that because I have that benefit, right? While you are still in school, while you are still in school, try to start the exam and pass them. You don't have that benefit. It doesn't mean you cannot pass the exam, right? And then all the other tips will then work for you. Right. Um, she again, I'll reference something what he said earlier. And when you write an exam, I can exam, take it as a project. Take it as a project. Um, there are so many things competing for our time, so many things competing for our attention at the same time. Right. The moment you see this as a project, it will be easier to focus. Right. Uh, you, you cannot be attending weddings every weekend like every other person if you are trying to pass the exam. Because if you are working nine to five, if you're working eight to five, the reality is, like um, Paul already said, eight to five is not eight to five. People have busy seasons. People have um, so many other things that will come up at work. On a standard day, I'm at work at 7 a.m. That's the personal decision. Anyway. I'm at work at 7 a.m. I don't live till about 8 p.m., right? In between all of that, I still have to find time to study, right? So you, the question would then be, what would I need to leverage? I need to leverage my weekend, my Saturday, my Sunday, right? I want to, as much as possible, set aside all the other things that could distract me. Uh, well, again, it's so important, they say, when you are uh, as a professional, it's important to build relationships. And we understand that some of these parties are the places where you actually build these relationships. These are the places where you build those networks. But right now, this is the project you have in front of you. So face it squared, right? That's the first point I wanted to make. Another point that everyone else has made that as well that I want to have on is the issue of uh, time management, planning, and your motivation, right? Don't follow the crowd if it doesn't work for you. People study at night because it works for them. In actual fact, one thing that I've realized over time is my body clock changes. There was a time I could study consistently from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I have no issues with it. But can I do that now? My body clock has changed. Clearly, I mean, then I could still be in school. But I can't do that any longer because I work full time. Right? How do I study 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. and still expect to be productive at work? It won't work. Right? So understand what works for you. If you don't have to study at night, don't study at night. So I got, you get home, um, I leave work at 8, I'm home by 9, 9 or thereabouts. Right? I go to sleep immediately. Why? Because I know that if I have 5, 6 hours of sleep, if I have 6 hours of sleep, that's 3 a.m. I'll be up by 3 a.m. I can study from 3 to 5.30 or 6, right? And then set up for work, right? So I've been able to put in three hours, right? One other thing I realized, again, understand your personal reality. I'm sharing my personal reality so that you can also think about yours and, let, and use that to your advantage. One other thing that I realized could work for me was, oh, in the morning I have to drive to work, right? If I'm driving one half, sometimes traffic is terrible, it's not more than one half to half. That's very precious time that I thought I could do. So what did I do? I had someone to drive. So that way, while I'm in the car and I'm on my way to work, I'm studying. Right? That works for me. That is my personal reality. I think that will work for me. And I use it to my advantage. Right? So think about all the all the all the um, all your personal circumstances and use up some of those things to your advantage. Um I think Timmy Topper also mentioned something about being consistent. It's one thing I also found out over time, right? That you do one day, the effort that you put in for that one day is all lost if you don't do it the next day. Because you're not consolidating. You're not adding to what you have learned in the past, right? You're having to start all over again, start all over again several different times. I'm sure that all of the time is gone. So you eventually lose out. So it's important yes. to not just start, but also sustain the momentum by studying as often as you can. Every day is, is, is important. There are days when you cannot go to school. I can't you. go to school. Of the three hours. There are days when I can't do when I can't do that, but I can do one half. And I do it. 
that helps you concentrate on what you've done in the past. I hope that uh, that helps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Odumide. That was very helpful. So, um, Mr. Shane. Okay. Um. Thank. Thank you very much. I think um, everyone has spoken well. You know. Uh, what I would just add to what everyone has said is to say, be yourself. Different strokes for different folks. Um, take advantage of today when you are preparing for ICANN examination because you are not certain about tomorrow. I've seen many students just that will tell you, I've already agreed with my boss. They are going to give me six weeks to go for the exam. They are going to give me one month and all that. I mean, plan more about today. That future can never be. Uh, I've seen students that plan based on that. During that leave period, they may fall sick and they won't be able to achieve anything. I've seen a student that plan based on that. And during that leave period, they will tell them, ah, sorry, we can't give you six weeks again. We are going to give you four weeks. Somebody has just left your department. And all those stories. So take advantage of every time you have today. Um, just like uh, Olumide mentioned, you can read in the BRT. You can take 30 minutes of your break time. Do that which works for you. If you are looking for a comfortable time, all of them we had up at the end of the day. I mean, I can't say you should not work because you need work to feed yourself, you know. But for everybody on this program this afternoon that are still in school, this is the best time to write your professional exam. When you start work, I mean, it's going to be a, a lot more difficult because of various uh, uh, factors that will come into, into play. So that is the point I'm going to add. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ndi. And what you said about knowing yourself is very important because self-awareness what works for paul might not necessarily work for me so that's where self-awareness comes in which is also one of our modules that we are packaging for you guys so we'll would be asking mr lumide mr lumide episode mr shay mr shay we know for a fact that you have over 20 years experience in teaching i can and you have come across a lot of students. So we're asking you what you think the common reasons for student failures are, the obvious and not so obvious reasons. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I would say number one is that um, most students, they don't know what they are going into when they come to ICANN class. I see that some come as either because of prayer pressure, my friend is doing ICANN I want to do, or some, my parents has asked me to go and do, I can let me go and do, you know. So when they come, they don't know what they are in for, you know. So for me, I think um, that's a major pitfall. Uh, anybody going into writing a professional exam must first of all sit down, get information about that exam, and be determined to pull it through. I see many students falling under this category. The other one, it's... Um, Students generally, they don't start preparation on time. You know, they tell you, oh, the exam is too far. Let's say they start lecture in January or February for a May diet, for instance. Ah, uh, May is too far. I can't start reading now. So they allow their notes to accumulate. And um, two, three weeks to the exam, they want to start everything. They want to assimilate the syllabus in that space. They get overwhelmed and they get discouraged. That's another pitfall. Another one is um, students don't study past question. I had one of the panelists talking about you need past question. What past question does is that it boosts your confidence. It gives you various scenarios that you're likely to see in the exam. Some of these scenarios, you may not even see them in the textbook. The lecturer may not even cover all of them in the classroom. But at your own personal study, if you're able to look at all these past questions, I mean, it will make a lot of difference. And of course, boost your confidence. I tell people that confidence is like 30% of the success in any examination. Once you are confident, you're able to think well. You're able to reason well. 
In fact, what you have not read before, you are able to think and improvise in the exam hall and write something down because you have confidence. And confidence comes as a result of syllabus coverage, studying enough past questions before the examination. So students don't study past questions is another pitfall. Another one is that students don't want to be themselves. My friend, Mrs. A, is reading at night. Like somebody mentioned on this discussion, you don't, you can't read at night. Your own time is day. Why don't you just read on in the day? They end up going to the class at night and you will see them sleeping all through the night. And you'll be like, in fact, you know what they do? They will say, I will not be the first to sleep. They will not be watching for somebody to sleep before they go. <laughs> at the end of the day, they are not even assimilating anything. Be yourself. If you're a day person, study during the day. If you're a night person, study during the night and ensure that you are making progress. Another pitfall is, you see students, they don't know a particular topic. Instead of them to ask their fellow students or to even ask the lecturer, they are shy. Ah, uh, they will think I don't know anything. Come on, it's a my short class. What you don't know, you don't know. Seek for help before the examination dates and be better than the person. I had Shewun saying that at some point he was asking Olumide to come and teach him and all. That is the way to do professional exam. What you don't know, ask questions. So you see them, they are shy, they don't want people to abuse them and all that. It's not right. Then the last one is, you see students, they don't move with the right set of people. I mentioned to you, some people come into those, this program without any plan. They've asked me to come. I am here. If you now find yourself in that category of a setting, I mean, you can't go far. Uh, you know, I'm sorry to say. We see them and they're like, ah, I hope these people will realize what they are doing on time and change before the examination day. So these are some of the pitfall we see. Another one is information overload. You know, I can as God recommended textbook produced by one of the world publisher, you know, and in the school they've also attended, they have study pack. You see them see buying this textbook, buying this textbook, buying this textbook. And at times, some of these textbook will contradict the, uh, one another. And the students are confused. Which one do I take now? So I tell people, you don't need information overload. I can study test is very, very good. It's well prepared. It's a solid material to pass this exam. Support it with your class notes and jottings and study find finder or insight as the case may be. So students should be wary of information overload. They bring, in fact, some will bring new textbooks three weeks to the exam. You're like, where do you want to start from? What have you been doing since four months ago? So these are some of the things we've seen, you know, uh, I mean, as pitfall of students, generally speaking. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, sir. And you're correct with everything, late preparation, using past questions. And on that note, for Tim Interpel, we have a question for you. Um, this was a question that came mainly from the um, comment section. A lot of people had that question for you. Um, Self-study in two sentences, what would you say, self-study or tutorial class, which one would you choose if you had to choose? Or do you think it should be an option or it should be both? Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, so it depends on the, for me, it depends on the course. So courses that are mainly theoretical, like auditing, management, I don't think, well, for me, I don't think there is any need to receive lectures, to be very honest. I think it's something you can sit down yourself, you can read. And when I was writing my exam in, um, I think, finals, we did audits. I paid for the lecture, but I did not receive the lecture. So the period of the lecture, I used it to do something else. That was the same thing I did in skills, MG. I did not receive the lecture, apart from the, I think, the ethical parts the management part because it's story and the story is interesting actually for mg the story is actually a very interesting one so you can read it why the core things like sfm ha ah, my dear you cannot read sfm on your own no <laughs> i think you should receive lectures it doesn't have to be physical lectures it could be video lectures it could be personal lectures like um, you pay a, a tutor to take you private classes it could be that and it could be general it could be general depending. So I think it's dependent on the course. If you are someone that likes to likes to be taught, I think you should receive lecture. And some people they don't like people teaching them, they like to teach themselves. So if you can't teach yourself, why not? Why not? Just 
just go with um, self study, self study. But for me, I'll do hybrid. I'll do both. For theoretical ones, I will just do self study. For the ones that involve calculation and a lot of complexities, I'll just do um, lectures. So yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Boy, for your time. We'd like to thank every one of you, all our panelists, Mr. Shei, Paul, Olumide, Dr. Boy, thank you very much for your time. This has been very powerful. We are nine minutes behind schedule, but we still want to thank you. We hope that everybody has gotten one or two things. I got a lot of things. We spoke about accountability, which can be found in module five of our products. We spoke about preparation techniques, that's in module four of our products. We spoke about reading techniques. We spoke about self-awareness. And just to wrap up, I'd like to say another very big thank you to all our panelists for this wonderful section. Thank you very much. Please let's thank them in the comment section. We are very grateful for your time. Thanks, Dora. Oh. Thanks for having us. Um, always a pleasure to be on it. Thank you very much. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Well done. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be on this. I wrote skills exam for the first time and I failed theory this. And at that point I was like, okay, that is it. I'm not writing I can ever again down. I was sad. I was discouraged that I felt even after sacrificing or reflecting. I was really studying. I was just reading, 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 and I still failed. I felt like a failure. I felt like I couldn't do anything right. And that was like, and that was actually my first time failing three exams at once. So yeah, that's my story. So Ayo, I mean, why do you think you failed? I can see that was is really wide, eh? and it is very difficult to cover. So I just thought this part I thought was important. I just did the exam all, and I can't, <laughs> I can't shame to me. So some of the part I didn't later study came out in the exam sad also i didn't answer the questions in a professional way. so ayo how was the coaching session for you it was really nice you yes, we were coming at the beginning and that allowed me to be very expressive especially about my fears i like that you give answers to some of the questions that have been bothering me and you mentioned that it was possible to cover the syllabus and you gave me a push to study at that. Yes. I mean, we have some amazing bonuses for you, right? We have a summit, virtual summit with one of the best speakers in the accounting profession in Nigeria. And trust me, we are just going to give you specifically this bonus, right, for a few sessions. We're not even going to make it public, right? We're just going to make it for just people that will pay for this course. And I'm happy you will really be on this program right and also i mean you get 10 percent off to our preferred and recommended tuition apps right i've taught in these tuition apps before and i understand the vision that they have and i've seen the results they've done and i can say okay these guys we can go with them so i'm giving you all that together right and you have a lot of clarity even for your life even for your career even for many other things right and at the same time we have some live interviews that we'll be doing with um some top leaders in the profession top leaders in the accounting profession in nigeria and we're putting that as a bonus too and in some of our models right so i mean guys honestly i myself my team the coaches and the top leaders say thank you and we say welcome to becoming a total account as one of them thank you, thank you.